Hi guys, today we will be determining the true angle in universal joint. So let me know about the universal joint with a small video. The present video represents two things. One was an X and the next one was a, a cross link. So when we start connecting the shafts, the input and the output in a collinear manner, so whatever the motion has given to the input, it translates towards an output in the sense the angular velocity of an input was equal to the angular velocity of the output but if instead of making in a collinear manner if we make in a inclined motion in the sense the input and the output shaft are placed in other than the straight line then the angular velocity of the input and the angular velocity of the output shaft will be entirely different when we observe when the two shafts in a collinear manner, the green end and the red end links are in a same plane. But when we observe in an inclined manner, the green end and the red end links are in a different planes. So whatever the angular velocity given to the input shaft will be differ in an output shaft because of the, the two links are in a different planes. So if we observe, so where we have a spinning axis here, in the sense the green and the red are not only making of a rotary, but it also having of a spinning action. If we arrest the spinning of the arm links, then the velocity transmission, which is the power transmission from the input to the output was a impossible case. If we observe the graph, so where the output velocity will be a differ because of the spinning action so as we have an, a constant input but where the output are in a fluctuating manner so because of these different plane rotations of uh, arm links so we are going to generate the fluctuating output result now with the help of the projections of this universal joint that is with the help of front view as well as the top view we are going to determine the true angle to get the output velocity this was the front view and the top view projections of a cross arm link of a universal joint. When we view in the driving shaft, the cross arm of a driving shaft will appear as a circle and the cross arm of a driven shaft will appear as an ellipse. In the sense that the cross arm AB as it is nearer to the observer, so it makes to appear as a circle and the CD it is away from the observer so it makes to appear as an ellipse the reason behind the thing is where the driving and the driven shaft are maintained within a few angles so whatever the shaft or whatever the cross arm link which is nearer to the observer it makes to appear as a circle and which is away from the observer it makes to appear as an ellipse so the present figure represents the cross arm links of AB and the CD without making of any rotation. If the input shaft starts rotating, then the cross arm link of the input shaft AB it also starts rotate. For example, if the input shaft it rotates with an angle of rent theta, then the cross arm link AB it also makes of the same angle theta and it gets a new position of a A1 B1. Similarly, the driven shaft CD cross arm link it also makes of a rotation of a same angle of rent theta and it gets a position of a C1 D1. So if we observe this particular diagram so the frame view represents in a clear manner so as the input shaft makes an angle of an theta the cross arm link of an input shaft AB it gets a new position of a a1 b1 with the same rotation for angle of a theta similarly the driven shaft cross arm link CD it also gets to the new position of a c1 d1 with the same rotation of an angle of a theta but here the angle theta which is for the driven shaft c1 d1 it's not a, a true angle because when we view in a input shaft it makes us to appear as an ellipse but actually the driven shaft cross arm link cd it also appears in form of a, a circular motion itself so now to determine the angle theta so instead of projecting on an ellipse we need to project on the circle so if we get an angle with respect to the circular motion then it says the, the true angle for the output shaft 
So to get this particular concept, now we need to step on to the engineering drawing in the projection of lines. Now we will be knowing the main thing behind the, the projection of lines. So if you observe the present figure, it shows that where this was the, the final front view and this was the, the final top view. And where these two has been connected with a straight line that what we call as a, a projectile. So now we are going to make a, a straight line because the top view that what we got here is a final top view which was a false length. So now we are going to make the false top view in terms of an straight. So now as we get it as an straight, then whatever the projection that we get in the front view, it will become a true length and the angle that what we got for the true length, it was a, a true angle. So now we have drawn a straight line. So and we are going to project the B over the straight line as a B1. So now we made the AB1 as a straight line. Now the projection of AB1 over the front view, it makes us to get the, the true length. So now the B1, it makes to get the projection in the front view as a B1 dash and it has to be placed only on the locus line and the locus line has to be a straight. Now when we start joining of A dash to the B1 dash, it makes us to get the true length and the angle over the true length will be determined as a, the true angle. So now the similar one, we are going to step on to the, the particular universal joint. Finally, we have determined the true angle with the help of uh, the position of lines. So here, over the C1 and the D1, we are going to define with the help of uh, a C1 itself because for the easiest understanding purpose. So the C1 N1 was a, a straight line that what we call as a, a projector, which is connection of the, the front view and the top view projections. So now to make the false length as an straight, we have drawn from ON1 as a radius to make it as a straight as a ON and then we start projecting from the end towards the front view until it intersects towards a, a circle and moreover we have drawn a locus which is a straight line. The reason behind the locus in the sense it was a source to place the, the front view projections of a, a C. There's a reason we need to draw a locus. Locus has been drawn in a straight manner and the projection of a top view, it has been projected towards a front view and it has been intersected over the circle as well as a locus and it has been mentioned as an C2. So when we start joining of a whole C2, we define it as a, a true line. And the angle which has been placed from the whole C to the OC2 which is an pi will be defined as a, a true angle. So with the help of this true angle we can define the output velocity of a different shaft. Thank you.